Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at um, a question that comes up now and again on the higher paper and it's a question that causes all sorts of problems to students, especially if they haven't prepped for it. But really, it makes use of a, a very simple grade C technique, but it's not so easy to spot. So we need to prep for the exam if we're going to be able to answer this question. What I'm going to do is talk about the distance between two points. Um, we're going to do a calculation to work out the distance between two coordinates that are given to you. Okay, and it's going to involve a bit of graph work. So let's give you an example. So if I give you an example, number one, if I say to you that we've got point A and it's got coordinates 3, 4, and I've got a point B and its coordinates are 7, 7, like so, okay, um, the question might say, plot and draw the line AB. So we're going to plot those points, join them up to get the line AB. And then the question will say, calculate, notice it says calculate, not measure, calculate the distance A to B, which is AB. Okay, so that's the question. So we've got two coordinates, let's plot them. So I'm going to set up axes here. Now, because they're all positive numbers, I don't need a big cross wire. So I'm just going to set up a y and x axis. So if this is the question in the exam, the, your gut instinct would be looking at that, um, I hope, anyhow, to actually draw a set of axes and plot them. Okay, so here we go, y and x axis, I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then on the same sort of scale, let's go up to 7 on the y axis, like so, and then I'm going to plot 3, 4, so 3 across, 4 up, that's point A, and then I'm going to plot B, which is 7, 7. So 7 across and 7 up. That's way up there. That's point B. You need to join them up to get the line AB. And our job is to calculate the length of that line. What you're not allowed to do is get a ruler out and measure it. Because that's measure the line AB. It wouldn't even give us the right answer if we did it, because it's not an, a really accurate picture. Okay, so... Um, it's going to be a calculation. So how do I do it? Well, the technique that I've, I've shown you um, in the past, and a technique that you're going to be familiar with, is if you want to know the length of a diagonal line like that um, for given, two given coordinates, we make use of grade C Pythagoras' theorem work. So if I get myself a colour, what I'm going to do is you need to construct for yourself, and I'll do this like so, a right angle triangle so that the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle is the length of the line AB which is what we're trying to work out. So I construct a right angle triangle like so. Now if you remember right angle triangles we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find a missing side length. So I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the length of AB. To be able to find AB I need to know the length of the other two sides. So I need to know the length of that, I need to know the length of that. So, from there to there, what you do is you read off the x-axis, like so. It goes from 3 to 7. So I know from 3 to 7 is a distance of 4 on that scale. Also, you need to know from there to there for this side of the triangle. If I go over that in solid, and that in solid, you can see the triangle that we're using. I need to know the side from there to there of that triangle. Well, if you go across here to the y-axis, you should be able to see it goes from 4 to 7. 4 to 7 is a distance of 3. So that side is 3 and that side is 4. I now know a triangle, which is right angle, and I know the length of two sides, 3 and 4. I now apply Pythagoras' theorem to work out the missing side. So what I'm going to do, I'll do the calculation here, Pythagoras' theorem h squared equals a squared plus b squared. The hypotenuse 
Well, if you remember, the hypotenuse for a right angle triangle is the long side, and that's the side A to B. So instead of hypotenuse squared, I'm going to write AB squared. That's what I'm trying to find. Equals little a. Well, little a and little b are the two short sides. They do not have special names, if you remember. They're just the two short sides. And it doesn't matter which of the short sides you call little a and which one you call little b. So, for example, I'll call that one little a and that one little b. If you want to label them little a and little b and that h, you can do. But I could have called that little a and that little b. It wouldn't make a difference to the answer. So, little a is 3. So, instead of a squared, you get 3 squared. Plus, little b is 4. So, instead of b squared, you get 4 squared. So, I've substituted the values in from the picture. I now work out the next line. So, little a, sorry, capital A, b squared is equal to, well, 3 squared is 9, plus 4 fours are 16. So, we get to there. So, a, b squared is 9 plus 16, that gives you 25. But that's a, b squared. I want to know what a, b is. So, I'm looking for a value times by itself gives 20, to give 25. So that means that AB is equal to, now obviously you should know 5 fives are 25, but if you don't, you simply press the square root button of your calculator and it gives you the answer 5. So the length of AB from A to B is 5 units long. Now you don't put centimetres, you don't put metres or millimetres because I haven't drawn an accurate picture with centimetres or millimetres or metres or whatever in it. So therefore all I say is it's 5 units long. And I would suggest that you need to write down that word units. It's five units long. And there you go. That's how you work out the distance of a line joining two points. I'm going to do one more with you. And I'm going to introduce some awkward negative number coordinates. Just to make sure that you understand when things get a li little bit more confusing with negatives. Okay. So, if I look at a second question, I'm going to do the same sort of thing again. Uh, question number two. I'm going to give you two points. A, this time, is minus 2, comma, minus 5. And B, I'm going to draw, is going to be, uh, let's say it's minus 4, comma, minus 1, like so. In fact, I'm going to make that plus 1. Okay, so I'll just put a 1 there. Minus 4, 1. And I'm going to say to you, I want to join those two points up, get a straight line, and calculate the length of the line AB. Right, now you can see here I've got negatives and I've got a positive there. So, if I'm going to draw a graph of this, um, I'm going to need some sort of positive and negatives going on. I'm not really thinking too much how I set up the axis here. I'm just going to do it very quickly. Um, the x's, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and down here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And then the y's, I'm going to go in a similar sort of way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5. Let's plot the points, A, minus 2, minus 5. So you go to minus 2 on the x, down to minus 5, there you go, that's A. B is minus 4, 1, so Minus 4 on the x, you go to there, and then up to 1, it's there. So that's B. So if you join them up, you get the line AB, like so. I've got to calculate the length of that line. So here we go. Let's construct a right angle triangle by drawing a vertical line underneath, like so, and then a horizontal line going across, like so. So I've created a right angle triangle. The black line AB is what I'm trying to work out, and it's the hypotenuse of that triangle. So what I now do is work out how long that red side is, one of the short sides of this triangle. And I do that by reading up to here, and you can see it goes from minus 2 to minus 4. Well, don't be put off by negatives. All that means is it's two steps, or two units along the axis. Do not start doing a takeaway so with negatives in, it gets confusing. Just say it's two steps along. It's two, it's two steps from there to there. So that distance is two. In the same way, I need to know how far it is from there to there. Don't be bothered or put off by negatives. Again, it goes from a minus five on that scale all the way up to a plus one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So it's six units long. So that is six units long there. 
That's how you work out the side lengths for that particular triangle. Okay, let's put those values now into uh, Pythagoras' theorem. So h squared equals a squared plus b squared. The hypotenuse, well, I suppose to be consistent with last time, it's called ab. So I will write ab squared equals little a and little b. Well, okay, I'll call that little a, I'll call that little b, and that was the hypotenuse. So little a is 2, 2 squared. Remember a and b, they could be the other way around, doesn't matter. So 2 squared plus, and then little b is the 6, 6 squared. So ab squared is equal to 2 squared is 4, and 6 sixes are 36. We get 4 plus 36, so ab squared is equal to 40, and then ab will be, well, I need to square root 40. In maths, we can write it like that, square root of 40. And if you work out the square root of 40, if you just bear with me for a second, I'll get a calculator. The square root of 40 is going to be equal to, okay, here we go, it's the square root of 40, and that is equal to, to one decimal place, AB is equal to 6.3 units. And there you go. That's the length of the line AB, and I've done it by calculation techniques. And that is a very typical um, exam standard question, which causes a lot of problems for a lot of students because they do not remember how to work it out. You won't be told to use Pythag, you have to know the method yourself. It's a Pythag question, even though it looks like a graph question to begin with, it's actually a Pythag calculation. That's the end of this video.